Welcome to this A Shot in the Arm podcast quick take. It's a live stream and where we are going to be covering key issues or calls to action in the field of global health and human rights. And today it's all about COVID-19 and the bill discussions happening in Washington, D.C. I am honoured to be joined by friend of a shot in the arm and a uh, President and CEO of Friends of the Global Fight, Chris Collins. Chris, welcome. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for having me. So look, let me see if I've got this right. In the Senate bill, we have $4 billion assigned for vaccine research into COVID, which we want, we love, we think is great. But there's no funding allocated for direct service implementation right now. And that comes at a time when we have nearly 1 million infections across Africa reported, and South Africa is suffering disproportionately from infections and deaths. And furthermore, this comes at a time when the uh, emergency funding uh, response that was got for the Global Fund to fight AIDS, TB and malaria, specifically for COVID, has run out. So we urgently have to get PPE, testing and tracing, um, uh, sanitation and awareness right across Africa. And we need to have funding in this bill for that. So have I got the basic elements of the, the crisis right? You're exactly right, Ben. I mean, the uh, negotiators on the supplemental bill are meeting today again. Right now, what they have to work with is in the Senate bill, as you said, uh, just about $4 billion for global overall, um, really all of that for vaccines, and that's great. We need the vaccine uh, funding uh, immediately to start with pro procurement and prepare to get a vaccine out. So the thing we have to understand is that that vaccine funding is just one piece of what we need in this picture. We absolutely need to grow the global investment in this supplemental to $20 billion dollars for all global, and that includes $4 billion for the global fund. As you said, if we fail to do that, then we're looking at a catastrophe emerging in Africa. We're steadily every day hearing thousands and thousands more uh, recorded infections of COVID in Africa. Um, there's a huge undercount, of course, in those numbers, so it's affecting many, many more people than we know about. Um, and we hear that the AIDS, TB, and malaria responses, these responses that the United States, frankly, has been investing billions of dollars in over decades, that those responses are imperiled. We could lose uh, 10, uh, we could lose a decade um, or more in the AIDS and TB responses. We could lose two decades of progress in the malaria response. So the situation is absolutely urgent. The money that we need to get services out now to protect health workers and do the diagnostics and testing, mitigate the damage against the AIDS, TB, and malaria programs. We need that right now. The Global Fund reprogrammed um, half a billion dollars to allow their partners to do that good work. That money's now gone. It so is the, the Global Fund, uh, just, just to finish, is is working with some money it got from Germany to peter along at a slower rate now in terms of helping countries. That money will be gone in a couple of weeks. The situation is urgent. The money is needed immediately. It must be in this supplemental bill. So you mentioned 20 billion. Uh, where did you get that number from? How did that come about? The 20 billion need for a global investment in the COVID response uh, comes from a one campaign and interaction estimate that they made, and the U.S. Global Leadership Coalition has picked that up, uh, and the whole global health and development community are behind that 20 billion number. So right now in the Senate bill, we've got 4 billion. In the House bill, we've got zero. We've got to get to 20, and 4 billion of that should be the global fund, along with that 4 billion for Gavi for vaccines and all the other priorities like nutrition um, and all the other things we need to be doing immediately. So that's rather shocking that the uh, representatives bill doesn't have anything in there. I know that, um, you know, here we are in the frozen wastelands of a cold California uh, San Francisco summer, but we know that our representatives, Lee, Speer, Bera McNerney, are, are trying to rally around the 
uh, U.S. global leadership, uh, U.S. GLC fund um, request for twenty billion. Um, but but um, one immediate question that would come to mind is, you know, why should we care at this point? I know this is going to sound a bit heartless, but bear with me. Um, at this point, um, Congress. Um, and the administration has not even been able to find resolution about continued unemployment support for Americans here in the United States for citizens. So, so wh why why should this be a priority at this point? Sure, absolutely. And and let's say also first of all, let's acknowledge that Speaker Pelosi has been an advocate for global funding for AIDS, TB, and malaria from her first day in Congress. I mean, this is a person who's been the champion on this issue, and I'm deeply thankful to Speaker Pelosi for her leadership on these issues. What we're saying now to all the members of Congress, the House and the Senate, is. That funding that we know you want to provide, it needs to be provided now. We cannot wait for the regular appropriations process for this to be delayed six months. Um, and absolutely, for the U.S. Congress, the priority is uh, responding to the immediate needs of the U.S. people. There's no question about that. What we're asking for in this bill is a fraction of a percent going to the global response. Up to now, Congress has passed about three trillion dollars worth of COVID emergency funding, 0.1 percent of that has gone to the global response. <laughs> and think about that in perspective. I mean, every year we spend in our federal budget, about one percent goes to international assistance. Here we're faced with a pandemic, which by definition is a global event. And we know we're never going to be safe in this country until we've addressed COVID around the world. So well, in I think that's, really that's really one of the, the key points, isn't it? Because America will not be safe uh, unless COVID is defeated right around the world. And right now we see a huge outbreak taking place in, in Africa, uh, a, a continent where we have been uh, part of the development and assistance response right from the mid-90s onwards. Well... Well, that's right. I mean, we won't be safe on a health level. We also won't be safe on an economic level if we let this rage uh, in Africa uncontrolled. Um, it will steeply undercut the economies of ap growing African countries. And, you know, that's some of the biggest economic growth in the world is in Africa or was until now. And you've got to think about this on a geopolitical level, too. Frankly, China is rushing in to be the major superpower that is helping in Africa address COVID. Up to now, we're basically absent. That is not a good posture for the United States in terms of our relationships with the world going forward. So the United States simply must, uh, for humanitarian, trade, and diplomatic reasons, has to step up our game in terms of global investment and frankly uh, protect the billions of dollars we's, we've invested in the global AIDS response and TB and malaria. We will squander that investment, if we don't step up now and help countries deal with COVID. So I just wanted to ask you a question that comes up as we try and promote this. Um, just in October last year, the Global Fund had a fantastically successful replenishment uh, conference. And you played a huge part in making sure that the U.S. Uh, contributed fully, well, more than fully, its, uh, its full amount. But couldn't the Global Fund just reprogram resources it's got right now? Let the U.S. sort out what's going on in COVID, with, with COVID priorities here in the U.S. at home and then maybe come back to this at the beginning of the year or at a later stage? Sure. And in fact, that's what they did. Right away, what the Global Fund did was let uh, countries do some reprogramming where they had savings in their programs to uh, uh, use some of that HTB malaria money for the COVID response. And countries have stepped up and done that, but it's hard because when you do that, you're taking money away from the urgent battle against HTB and malaria. Then in addition, there was some funds that was going to be used down the road by the Global Fund, and they re 
um, commissioned those so that uh, that's $500 million so that it could be used for countries on an application basis to address COVID, shore up health systems and do other things to shore up the AIDS, TB and malaria responses. That was $500 million. That money is now gone. Uh, they've committed actually $511 million to that as of yesterday. So what they're running on now is some money that they got from Germany about a month ago, and that is going to be out in a couple weeks. So then they're running on the fumes, fund, Then the Global Fund has zero dollars to help countries on a health level deal with COVID. The money's completely gone in a few weeks. Um, so, so the action is needed immediately. So you are an expert in promoting global health needs in Washington, D.C., this sort of fevered place of uh, negotiations and advocacy. I get the sense from you that this is not getting the attention that you feel it needs. Why is that at this moment? You know, as we all know, our country is in crisis in terms of dealing with COVID. It's a, it's a terribly severe situation in the United States. People are going without jobs, without income. Their health is at risk. People are dying. Um, we're in a terrible situation in our own country. And our own country comes first in terms of what Congress does to address COVID-19. I absolutely agree with that. As an American taxpayer, I'm on the same page. What we're asking is for a fraction of 1% to go to the global response from the United States government. This country is has been known around the world as a global leader on health, and it's done wonders in terms of how the world thinks about us, our diplomatic posture in the world. We are at risk of losing all of that if we are absent from the world response on COVID. Africa is in a terribly serious situation right now. It's really at the pivot point. This is the moment where the world needs to decide, are we going to let Africa descend into disaster with COVID or are we gonna do something about it? And both you and I are passionate believers in the US uh, relationship with the continent of Africa as a strategic security uh, and economic priority. So, so what's next in your strategy? What happens now over the next few days? Everyone watching, I know none of us like it when we're asked to call or write our member of Congress or our senator. And it's really easy to disregard that and say it doesn't matter or I don't have time to do it. We just can't have that response right now. If you care about whether the United States gives money to help African countries not face a catastrophe, you've got to call both your senators and you've got to call your representative in the House and demand $20 billion for the global response to COVID in this supplemental, not regular appropriations, but in the supplemental right now. That's what everybody's got to do. In addition, organizations that you're part of, call them up, call their leaders and say, they've got a way in too. We need to get to the negotiators who are in the room for the supplemental. So that's Senator Schumer, uh, uh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi um, and others. Um, and uh, that needs to happen today. So, so that's really, I think, the call for everybody. The other thing is to uh, be in touch with local media, uh, be active on social media. Uh, this needs to happen today. So you on your website, um, friends, uh, no, sorry, www.theglobalfight.org. I always, always need to get that right. www.theglobalfight.org. You've got examples of letters that you have sent and that others have sent, and folks can go onto your website and get the key messages that they should include in their letters to their uh, elected officials. Um, we're going to distribute this uh, live stream um, quick take widely and make it available to folk, uh, our supporters, our viewers, our listeners, and strongly urge them to distribute it as well. Now, is there anything that we haven't covered, Chris? Is there anything else that you feel it's really important we should know at this stage? I would just reemphasize that that in terms of the people who really need to hear, you need to get to your elected officials and ask them to get to the people who are in the negotiating room. So again, 
Um, it is the Democratic leaders that I noted. It's also Senator McConnell, and it is also people at the White House. So any way you're able to get to people who can get to those folks, now's the time to do it. That really is the urgent thing. But again, also not only do it as an individual, harness the organizations you're part of. Uh, businesses can be incredibly influential with politicians. Your businesses, faith communities you're involved in, they've all need, got to act within the next 48 hours. Um, in the past, uh, senators like Lindsey Graham from the Republican side have been supporters of uh, global investments in um, global health. Uh, is he someone as well that you think we should be reaching out to? Uh, my understanding is that Senator Graham's been very strong in support of strong uh, global investment in this supplemental. I think that uh, Senator Graham uh, has the message and understands the need. Um, that's one more uh, example of how the way this decision gets made is with the top negotiators in the room. Senator McConnell, Senator Schumer, Speaker Pelosi, and the White House representatives, including Treasury Secretary, Secretary Mnuchin. We need to get to people who can get to them. That's the bottom line. And it also goes to show that you have a fully bipartisan approach here. Um, and what we want is the outcome of $20 billion going in an emergency investment into COVID-19. Africa facing a catastrophe is not a partisan issue. Yeah. Well, Chris, thank you so much for walking us through this. Um, go to uh, Friends of the Fight uh, website, www.theglobalfight.org. There it is on the screen. Um, Chris, keep us posted. If there's anything more that we can do to help, don't hesitate to ask. And please do come back and let us know how things are playing on. For regular viewers and listeners of A Shot in the Arm podcast, we've got an exciting week ahead of you. On uh, Wednesday, we have my live interview with Congresswoman Barbara Lee. And Chris, I promise uh, we will bring this question up and see where we are in the negotiations. So watch out for that. Um, everybody have a safe and a healthy week. And of course, don't forget to wear your mask. <laughs>